The Fitch Bandwagon with Alice Fay and Phil Harris. For hair that's dreamy soft like moonlight and glistening with romantic highlights, use Fitch's new cream shampoo. Fitch cream shampoo leaves hair romantically soft and shining. That's because it's made with two beneficial beauty aids, purified lanolin and the finest olive oil. Lanolin is used to soften your hair, to help overcome dryness. Olive oil is used to bring out sparkling highlights, to make hair glisten as though it had been brushed and brushed and brushed. And Fitch Cream Shampoo is so simple to use. Just a dab billows into clouds of rich lather in hard or soft water. Then to rinse, a swish of plain water and every trace of suds disappears. After shampooing, your hair is wonderfully soft and a joy to arrange. Fitch Cream Shampoo is economical too. Compare its size, compare its low cost. Ask for it at drug and toilet goods counters. That's Fitch Cream Shampoo for hair that's soft like moonlight and shining like bright starlight. The F.W. Fitch Company, makers of Fitch Shampoo, presents The Fitch Bandwagon, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Ollie O'Toole, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Betty Lou Gerson, Walter Scharf and his music, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> Phil has decided that it's about time the children saw their daddy at work. And so he and Alice are taking them to watch the band rehearsal. And now as we look in, we find the Harris family entering NBC. You girls are going to be proud of your daddy when you see him standing there leading his orchestra. Does daddy have a good orchestra, Mommy? Well, I'll I... answer that, Gertrude. <laughs> Kids... Your daddy's got a terrific outfit. 26 different kinds of instruments, and I stand in front and lead them all. Do you use the podium, Daddy? Naturally. I got the best podium player in the business. <laughs> hey, come on, kids. We're rehearsing in this studio right here. Phil. Phil, do you think it's wise to take the children into your band rehearsal? Well, why not? I want them to see all the boys in the band. Yes, but... Do you think they're old enough to stand the shock? <laughs> all right, all right. The boys in my band are all right. They're perfect gentlemen, and they have a lot of respect for me. They do just as I tell them to do. Don't worry about a thing. Come on, everybody, let's go in. Hey, fellas. Fellas, I want you to meet... Keep holding it. <laughs> Keep your heads down and don't press. <laughs> hey, fellas. All right, let's have it quiet in there. Look. Hey, I got a surprise for you guys. I want you to meet my daughters. <laughs> hey, kind of cute, ain't they? Yeah, one on the left is beautiful. You mind if I kiss the little darling too? <laughs> No, no, go ahead, Artie. Okay. Hook her up, honey, and Uncle Artie will slip you a little kiss. Artie, that one's my wife. <laughs> well, how was I supposed to know she was your wife? Well, why didn't you ask? What? Well, a good thing? Get back. <laughs> Go back there and sit down. All right, everybody, now quiet. Let's get ready to play. Now, girls, uh, is there anything in particular you'd like to hear? We can... We can play any song at all. You see, we got a big reservoir. <laughs> uh, what do you... What would you like us to play, Phyllis? Can they play Farmer in the Dell? <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby. Listen to me. These men are accomplished musicians. Pick out something hard. How about Rockman and 
Penthouse Prelude in C sharp minor. <laughs> you heard her, fellas. Farmers in the Dell. <laughs> Daddy, I'd rather hear Rachmaninoff's prelude in C-sharp minor. All right, all right. All right, guys, we'll play that. Hey, what? What she said. <laughs> now, come on, let's play it. I'll kick it off. One, two... And that's what I like about Rachmaninoff's prelude in C-sharp minor. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, how'd you like that? Oh, it was awfully loud. Why do they have to blow so hard, Phil? It was not loud, and they don't blow hard. How did you like it, kids? Did you think that... Hey, Alice, where are the children? The last time I saw them, they were three feet off the ground and flying north. <laughs> <laughs> well... Maybe it was a little loud. All right, fellas, let's try it once more, and this time, no harp. <laughs> hey, it's Frankie. Frankie, I didn't hear your guitar, and I want to hit... Wait a minute. Where's Frankie? He ain't here yet. <laughs> what do you mean he ain't here yet? He ain't never here. He hasn't been here for two weeks at rehearsal. What's the matter with that guy? What's happened to him? He said a lot. <laughs> Remley's in love with what? Yeah, in love. He's going with some society girl named Cynthia Cavendish. She goes in for the arts and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> the arts? What does Remley know about the arts? He'd be lost with a girl like that. He wouldn't even know what to quiet, do with it. Quiet, the... quiet, Phil. Frankie just came in. Oh, oh, lover boy finally arrived, huh? <laughs> um... Good afternoon, Don Juan. Felicitations, maestro. Never mind that. <laughs> now, listen, Remley, you're right, late for rehearsal. You've been late for rehearsal, and I'm getting sick and tired of... I... Wait a minute. <laughs> What's that you got on your head? A beret. <laughs> <laughs> well, ooh-la-la -la and rude la pet. <laughs> Hold still and I'll kiss you on both cheeks, Pierre. Frankie, why are you wearing a beret? All us artists wear them. My girl, Cynthia Cavendish, says it's a badge of our trade. If I didn't wear my beret, I'd feel as nude as a floor walker without a carnation. Oh, wait a minute. What's the matter with you? So now you're an artist, huh? Every day it's something else. Now you're an artist. You're going to paint pictures, too, I suppose. Paint? Please. <laughs> Cynthia says that painting is barbaric expressionism. Cynthia says that I have a genius far beyond painting. Cynthia says that I am a sculptor. Cynthia talks a lot, doesn't she? <laughs> Frankie, listen to me. Get the beret out of your eyes and listen to me. I want to talk to you. What are you getting yourself into here? What kind of a dame is this Cynthia? Oh, hold on, maestro. <laughs> Miss Cavendish is a person of breeding and culture who's possessed of a sensitive, artistic soul, and I'll have you know she is not a dame. <laughs> she happens to be a high-class tomato. <laughs> and she's got you believing that you're a sculptor now, huh? Well, I'll tell you one thing, Remley. You've got to show me. Sit down and sculpt me something. Go ahead, sculpt. I can't do it just like that. The feeling has to come to me first. The mood has to come from within me, from deep down inside. <laughs> well, open your mouth and I'll look in and see if it's ready. <laughs> Don't be facetious. I can't sculpt until I'm in the mood, and that takes... Wait, hand me my mallet and chisel quick. I feel the mood coming over me. I... Too late, it's gone. <laughs> it didn't hang around very long, did it? Well, if you'll excuse me, fellas, I have to drop the children off at Mother's and do some shopping. Goodbye, Phil. So long, honey. I'll see you at the house. Oh. Goodbye, kids. Oh. Bye, Bye, Daddy. Yeah. Goodbye. Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> sculptor. Pierre the Sculptor. Remley, I don't know. You're a sculptor, huh? Oh, yeah. You know something? 
I'd give anything in the world to see you at work. Okay. <laughs> I just happen to be starting a bit of statuary this afternoon. I'll bring Cynthia over to your place and you can watch me. Cynthia's going to model for me. Oh, what a shit. You will? Sure. Well, it's a deal. Let me tell you something. I can't wait to see you with a hammer and a chisel. <laughs> You'll see. This I've got to see. Now, call your girl and tell her to meet her, uh, tell her to be over at my place. Huh? Okay. That's a deal. All right. But look, before we leave, I've got to run over a tune. All right, gentlemen. The maestro is in the mood. <laughs> if you're ever down to Texas, look me up. Look me up. If you're ever down in Texas, look me up. Where the men are men and love it, and the gals are so glad of it. So if you're ever down in Texas, look me up. Everybody's gonna holler, how to do, how to do. Everybody there'll be saying, how are you? We raise corn for hot tamales and grow dollies for the follies. So if you're ever down in Texas, look me up. Ask anyone for Rusty, everybody knows for me. They'll tell you where I'm riding at bar A, B, C, or D. So if you're ever down in Texas, look me up, look me up. We've got everything in Texas looking up. With the moonlight on the prairie and a gal that ain't contrary, there's a lot of fun in Texas, look me up. Ask anyone for Phil Z, they'll tell you where I'm at. You'll find me down at Galveston with a box back coat and a Stetson hat. So if you're ever down in Texas, look me up, look me up. They've got everything in Texas looking up. Am I right or am I really, man? That state's a killer dilla. So if you're ever down in Texas, look me up. Bronco bust and take some practice or you wind up on a cactus. So if you're ever down in Texas, look me up. Where the gal that's good at figures and the cowboy's quick on triggers. So if you ever down in Texas, look me up. Every gal's a raven beauty. Hip tie, 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 dee. Oh, I can't wait to get back down there and hear some of that talk. It goes like this. Sure glad you come by. Don't you all forget to come back now, you hear? <laughs> Bye now. Bye. I'm going to build a Dolby Palace for my Alice down in Dallas. So if you're ever down in Texas, look me up. All right, Remley, I'm letting you use my house to do this sculpting. Is when is this, uh, this Cynthia? Oh, yeah, when is, uh, when is Cynthia going to get here? She'll be here soon. Where'd you meet her, Curly? She's real class, and she's crazy about me. Why? <laughs> what can a dame possibly see in you, Remley? She must be after what little dough you have. I resent that. She don't need my dough. She told me she's from a very wealthy family, but she gave it all up to be an artist. She never asked for anything. Poor kid lives in a cold garret. The only thing she ever asked me to buy her was a mink coat to keep her warm. <laughs> And you bought her a mink coat just to keep her warm? Not exactly. <laughs> I talked her into red flannel underwear. <laughs> Frankie, I don't know. I, 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 I can't understand how you can go for a naughty dame like that. They don't think of anything but themselves. They have no hey, regard... Hey, let's be her now. Come on, I can't wait to introduce you to her. <laughs> Tennis, anyone? <laughs> Shall we have a go at it? <laughs> yeah, this sounds like a weekend at Noel Coward. <laughs> Come on in, Cynthia. I want you to meet my pal, Phil Harris. Curly, this is Miss Cavendish. How do you do, Miss Cavendish? I'm very happy to meet you. How do you know? <laughs> I am always in days. How can you say you're happy when you don't know anything about me and I don't know anything about you? We might dislike each other intensely and become enemies later. Why wait? <laughs> You two are going to learn to love each other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's expensive. 
Oh, I doubt it. I can't stand men with curly hair. They annoy me no end. Frankie, what's cooking with this chip? <laughs> Did somebody slip barbed wire into her corset stage? <laughs> You just don't understand her, Curly. Well, she's really very human. She's got a lot of warmth, especially for me. Watch this. <laughs> Cynthia, aren't you going to kiss me hello, dearest? Franklin, you know I detest kissing. I think it's very vulgar. Oh, this kid's as warm as a penguin's instep. <laughs> agree with Cynthia. Kissing is vulgar. Uh, do you mean that, Frankie? I do. And you feel the same way about it, Cynthia? I do. I now pronounce you man and wife. Rub noses and get lost. <laughs> now, take it easy, Curly. Cynthia, if you're going to model for me, let's get started. Go in the other room and put on your jungle outfit. Yeah. Jungle outfit? What's she going to be, a witch doctor? <laughs> no. She's wearing a black bear skin. I'm going to make a statue of the Neanderthal man and his mate. She's going to be the mate and... Wait a minute. Cynthia, we forgot a male model. Oh, your friend here will do. Mr. Harris, slip into this leopard skin. <laughs> leopard skin? Yes. Here it is. Look, lady, get that thing out of here. If you think I'm going to wear that gravy-stained loincloth, you're off of your feet. <laughs> I who? I ain't Let's not argue. Are you not you're some retarding night? my artistic career. <laughs> now put the leopard skin on. Are you kidding, Clyde? I wouldn't wear that thing if I was a leopard. <laughs> I'm not going to wear it either, and that's fine. What's the matter? Are you ashamed of your physique? Am I what? Ashamed of my physique. Lady, you're looking at the stand-in for gorgeous George. <laughs> Jeffries, spray this peasant. <laughs> Shame to my physique. Give me that dead skin there. I'll put it on. I'll show you something. Atta boy, lady. Curly. I'll help you. Franklin, I told you I'm going to look great in this thing, didn't I? Ah, get a load of that physique. Ah, get a load of that body. <laughs> uh, ain't that a thing of beauty? Yeah. Hundred and eighty pounds of solid flab. <laughs> Flab. What are you talking about, Flab? I'm all muscle from the tip of my toe to the top of my head. And I might add that I'm irresistible in this leopard skin, and it's a good thing we're not close to the zoo where I'd have every female leopard purring like a kitten. <laughs> okay, Spot, come on. <laughs> now, let's get back in the other room so I can get started. Oh, wait, I'd better knock first and see if Cynthia's ready. We can't go in until she's got her bear skin on. Now, Curly, when you pose with Cynthia, I want you to... Okay, okay, Frankie, I'll get that. I'll get it. You go get the bear ready. Okay. <laughs> hey. Them cavemen had the right idea about wearing these leopard skins. Gee whiz, they're nice and soft and... Gee, they're comfortable to get around in. Oh! Oh, hiya, Julius. Well, if it ain't Jungle Jim. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cut your motor, kid. Get back into neutral. Just bring the groceries in. That's all you have. Okay. Wait till I tie up my elephant, Sahib. <laughs> what the heck happened to you, Mr. Harris? Nothing happened to me. Nothing happened to me. I'm just wearing a leopard skin. <laughs> Don't 
Don't get gay, nature boy. <laughs> Mr. Remley just happens that uh, Mr. Remley has taken up sculpturing, and uh, he's... Uh, well, I'm posing for him. This ought to set art back about 50 years. <laughs> Nothing about sculpting. Mr. Remley knows something about sculpting, too. Yeah. Now, if you're a skeptic, come on in the room and I'll let you watch him work. This I gotta see. Hey, Frankie. Huh? You mind if Julius watches your chisel? <laughs> no. <laughs> come on in, kid. Thanks, Mr. Remley. I just wanna see. Hey, Mr. Remley, what's that bear sitting in the corner for? What bear? <laughs> oh. That's my fiance. I'm going to marry her. <laughs> Couldn't get a girl, huh? <laughs> she is a girl. Kind of hairy, ain't she? <laughs> He's wearing a bearskin outfit. Scared me for a minute. You want to watch Clam Up? Now, Curly, I'll tell you how to pose for this. I want to get a pure, primitive effect. You pick Cynthia up and hold her in your arms. You're a caveman, and you're saving her from a dinosaur. It'd make more sense if you had the dinosaur saving her from Mr. Harry. Why, <laughs> kid, you're in on a rain check already, you know. <laughs> All right, Frankie. I got Cynthia up here in my arms. Well, ain't that a touching little tableau? <laughs> You held a strange bear in your arms. Quiet, or I'll sick Carmichael on you. <laughs> Come on, Frankie, will you? Let's get started. Wait. Oh. I need music to get me in the mood. Oh, fine, yeah. fine. Now he needs music to get him in the mood. Do you want me to sing to you? That ain't the mood I want to get into. <laughs> Curious? Turn that phonograph on him, back of you. Okay, I'll put on one of my space records. It'll be the only bright spot in an otherwise dull afternoon. Love, love, hooray for love Who is ever too blasé for love Make this a night for love If we have to fight, let's fight for love Some sigh and cry for love Oh, but in Paris, they die for love. Some ways to wait for love. Just the same hooray for love. It's the wonder of the world. It's the rocket to the moon. It's a touch of the It gets you high. It gets you low. But once you get that glow, Some trust to fate for love Others have to take off weight for love Some go berserk for love Loafers even go to work for love Sad songs are sought for love People have their noses bobbed for love Some say we pay and pay for love just the same hooray, hooray for that thing for Yes, how much longer do I have to hold Cynthia in my arms? I'm getting tired. Curly, stop sagging. <laughs> Don't lose the expression on your face. Remember, you're saving a girl from a dinosaur. Well, hurry up, will you? This leopard skin is starting to itch. Oh, I feel I'm home and I... <laughs> well, what's going on here? Oh, oh, it's you, Alice. Yes, Tarzan. <laughs> it's me, your mate. What is that woman doing in your arms? Oh, her? Oh, I'm saving her from a dinosaur. Oh, oh, good, good. The house has been overrun with them lately. What's the meaning of this? Mr. Harris, will you please tell your housekeeper to run along? <laughs> housekeeper? Cynthia, darling, this is not the housekeeper. This is Alice, Mr. Harris's wife. Oh. 
How do you do? <laughs> Franklin, I can't stand all these distractions. I'm going to lie on the sofa down there until some of you people leave the room. Well, yes, lie down over there and rest, dearest. Dearest? Frankie, don't tell me that charming creature is the girl you're in love with. Yeah, what's wrong with her? Frankie, you're too nice a guy to be taken in by a girl like that. Alice is right, Frankie. She ain't for you. I think she's a phony. How dare you talk that way about Cynthia? She's a high-class society girl of very good breeding. Oh, really? Well, how did you meet her, Frankie? Under very respectable circumstances. I was driving down Wilshire Boulevard. She was standing on the corner. I blew my horn. The next thing I know, she was in my car. <laughs> It was love at first honk. <laughs> I might have known that's how you met her. Bill, did you hear that? Frankie picked her up. No. <laughs> Happens to Betsy. <laughs> how disgusting. <laughs> That and I resented. You did not pick me up, Franklin, and you know it. I didn't, huh? Honk, honk, go my way, babe. Thank you, sir. I'd be glad to take a lift. I'm just going. <laughs> All he said was honk, honk. <laughs> An aggressive duck could pick this kid up. <laughs> Cynthia, that can't be true. You told me I was the only man in your life. You said I was the only man you never let kiss you. You even said you'd never accept expensive gifts from anyone else but me. <laughs> Curly's right. I see it all now. It was all a plan. You were just after my money. What was she planning to do, starve to death? <laughs> you know you ain't got a dime. He hasn't. Lady, that's my shirt he's wearing. Oh, Franklin, how could you? You told me you were independently wealthy, that you had stocks and bonds and... <laughs> oh, never mind. I'm leaving. Goodbye, Franklin, and thanks for everything. Hey, Frank, hmm? what's she thanking you for? If you gave her any expensive gifts, you better get them back now. Don't be a sucker. You're get right, back. Curly. No we'll one can take advantage of me and get away with it. Yeah. Cynthia, before you go, there's something I have to say to you. What do you want? I'll thank you to return my red flannel underwear. <laughs> Bill will be back in just a moment. No shampoo in a tube. No shampoo in a jar. And no other shampoo in a bottle leaves your hair so completely dandruff-free as Fitch. Fitch's dandruff remover shampoo. For Fitch is the only shampoo specifically made to remove dandruff. Leading medical authorities say there are two kinds of dandruff. One is loose and flaky... It's the unsightly kind other people see. The second type clings to the scalp. It's the invisible, irritating kind you can feel. And Fitch is guaranteed to remove both kinds of dandruff completely. So be free of all embarrassing dandruff with Fitch. Fitch is the only shampoo made that's guaranteed to remove dandruff with the first application. And the Fitch guarantee is backed by one of the world's largest insurance firms. Remember, no shampoo in a tube... No shampoo in a jar. And no other shampoo in a bottle leaves your hair so completely dandruff-free as Fitch. So switch to Fitch. Use it regularly each week. At drug counters, barber, and beauty shops, ask for Fitch's Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Fitch is spelt F-I-T-C-H. This is Phil Harris again. Folks, today there are 30 million starving children in Europe. And you can help these kids by sending a food package or cash to CARE in New York City. You can designate where you want your contribution sent or leave it up to CARE. Remember, the address is CARE, New York City. Good night, everybody. <laughs>